You asked for it, so here it is, more vegan sushi. The last sushi video I made, we did a spicy crab mix and it was a big hit. So I'm making more sushi today and it's inspired by one of the best rolls that I've ever had, one of my favorite rolls, actually two favorite rolls, the caterpillar roll and the dragon roll. And the thing about both of these rolls is that they have eel on them. So because we're making these vegan, we're obviously not going to be putting any eel on it. So we're going to be making eggplant eel. And the thing that makes eel what it is is actually the eel sauce. No one really cares about the flavor of that eel. Uh, they care about the sauce because that's what really carries through all of the sushi rolls. So I'm going to show you how to make this eggplant eel, show you how to make the sauce, and then I'm going to be using it in these two rolls, the vegan caterpillar roll and the vegan dragon roll. So let's start making the sauce. The sauce is super easy to make and it's basically a slightly thicker, slightly sweeter version of a teriyaki sauce. So I'm starting out here with a quarter cup of vegan sugar with the cracker in it. I need a quarter cup of mirin. And I'm gonna be using Bragg's liquid aminos as my soy sauce. I think it just has a really nice flavor. You could just use soy sauce if you want, but a quarter cup of that. I do have a dark soy sauce. I'm gonna be adding a splash of. This is just because the liquid aminos is a little bit light. So the dark soy sauce just helps to make the color a little bit more rich. To that, I have some sesame oil, just a few drops of that. And then to thicken it all up, I have some cornstarch here. It's about a tablespoon. And because all of the ingredients are cool or room temperature right now, I can add the cornstarch at this point and stir it in so that it'll thicken when I heat it up. You don't want to add cornstarch to a hot liquid because it'll clump up, but it'll dissolve here pretty well. So I'm going to just mix this together and then I'll meet you over at the stove. I'm turning my stove to kind of a medium high heat. The um, sugar isn't dissolved here. It's still pretty granular. And what we want to do is just bring this up to a simmer and we want to watch it to make sure nothing burns to the bottom as well. We want to make sure that it doesn't boil over because once it starts to simmer, it's going to get a little bit foamy. So we want to just be able to keep an eye on it. So I'm just going to stand here and stir it while it comes up to a simmer. And then once it starts to bubble, it'll start to thicken and it'll clarify a bit. And we're going to let it go for maybe another minute or so after that. And then our sauce will be done. So you can see that it is getting bubbly and foamy at this point. I'm going to turn it down to low and just let it go for maybe another minute and that'll help it thicken up and reduce slightly. You wanna get, uh, get it a little bit thicker through the reduction as well as the cornstarch. But this is pretty much it for the sauce. So let it go one more minute and then I'm gonna set it aside and start making the eggplant. This is reduced and thickened a bit and it'll thicken the more that it cools. And I'm just gonna set this aside in a bowl and this is actually gonna be going on the eggplant when it cooks, so don't set it too far away. This Chinese eggplant here is going to become our eel, and I'm gonna be using this mandolin slicer to cut it up. I have it set on a quarter inch, and if you don't have a mandolin slicer or they scare you, then you can always just cut it into discs like this, uh, about a quarter inch thick, and it'll do the same Thing. You just won't necessarily have the final diamond shape cuts that we're looking for, but it'll still work. I also have this chopping glove on here, which is because I'm afraid of this mandolin. So uh, I recommend just being very careful because you are gonna be kind of close to the blade with this eggplant. So go ahead and slice this into quarter inch I don't know, sheets, slices, and try to just get it as even as possible and you'll probably get about 
two to three rolls out of each of these eggplants. And you can see why I have this glove on. I'm getting really close to the blade. Just be careful. All right. I'm going to put these on a baking sheet, then I'll show you how we sauce them up and bake them. So we have a number of these slices of eggplant, and I'm just going to be laying them out here on this. Uh, it's a rack for my smart oven. Now you want to make sure that you're putting this on sill pad or parchment paper because this sauce is pretty sticky and you don't want it to cause you to not be able to pull your eggplant off because it's stuck. And also it's going to get pretty caramelized. So you don't want things burning to uh, a pan and have to struggle with getting that off. So uh, my tray here holds, what is that? Six slices. And so I'm just going to brush on our sauce. I'm gonna be careful not to get too sloppy with it to try to get it just on the top of the eggplant because like I said, this will caramelize. That means my oven's preheated. Uh, because this is gonna caramelize quite a bit and it will, it'll wind up on the, on the baking mat here, but you just wanna to try to limit it so that it'll eliminate some of the smoking that'll occur because it's gonna get quite dark. So just applying a nice layer of our eel sauce to the top of the eggplant. The oven is set to 350 on convection. So if you don't have convection, I would maybe go a little bit higher than 350, but if you are using convection, 350 is a really great temperature. And these are gonna go in there for 15 minutes on this side. Then I will flip them over, baste the other side with the sauce, and they'll go for another 10 minutes, and then they're eel. These two rolls, the caterpillar roll and the dragon roll, pretty much have similar ingredients, just slightly rearranged. So the caterpillar roll is green on the outside to resemble a caterpillar. So that has the eel on the inside and then slices of avocado on the top. The dragon roll has the eel on the outside to give it that more dragon scale appearance. So we're gonna be making both of those and I'm just gonna show you the other items besides the uh, eggplant eel that are going to be uh, accompanying this roll. So I have some panko breadcrumbs that I just lightly toasted in a pan with a bit of oil. This is just going to add a bit of crunch and depth to the dish. Um, I have an avocado, which I'm going to show you how I slice that up in just a moment. Uh, a cucumber, which I've already sliced. I peeled it, took out the seeds and then sliced it into thin strips. I have a spicy mayo. Now I was going to be making this fresh for you today, uh, but I did run out of mayo. So this is from my testing of it. Basically, it's a homemade aquafaba mayo, but you could use any vegan mayonnaise that you want and some sriracha. And that'll be, the, the recipe for this will be in the recipe that I'll have linked below. The last item I've never actually used before. I saw this on uh, Lisa the Viet Vegan's channel, and this is a, uh, it's called Red Seaweed Pearls. They're from Ikea. And essentially this is a vegan smelt roe. So vegan fish eggs. So we'll see how this goes, but let me show you how I cut up this avocado. This avocado is going to be good for two rolls and I'm going to be treating it in two separate halves for sort of two different purposes within the roll. So one half I'm going to leave just as it is because I'm gonna be spooning the inside out to put inside of the roll. The other half I'm going to be slicing up very thinly so that it can go on the outside of the roll. So let me try my best to skin this. And this is very similar to what I did in the last sushi video, which I will have linked up above. And I'm gonna just slice it in half this way. And then very, very thinly slice it down. This is so that I can fan it out and this will cover the top of the rolls. It helps if the avocado is ripe, but not too, too ripe. You can see that it's pretty structurally sound still. So I'm gonna set this aside and wait for the yield to finish, and then we'll assemble the rolls. Rice is very important to your sushi. I believe the word sushi just means seasoned rice. So I have a rice cooker here, and I love this thing. I think it cooks the rice perfectly. And uh, I've actually cooked this rice ahead of time so that it would be cool enough for me to handle when I 
uh, when it came time to roll. So it's cooked and I've added a bit of this seasoned sushi vinegar. I prefer to buy it already seasoned. I feel like the sweet to salty to acidity ratio is already perfect here and I've never been able to really match it. So I put probably to two cups of rice, maybe about a quarter cup worth of the seasoned vinegar, pour it in there, stir it up. And then you really wanna let the rice cool to room temperature so that you can handle it and put it onto the roll. So my rice is ready to go and we're just waiting on the eggplant so that we can make rolls. First 15 minutes are up. So what I'm going to do is flip these eggplant slices over and I'm going to baste the other side and they're gonna go back in the oven for 10 minutes. All right, these are going back in for 10 more minutes. And then we roll. The eggplant is done. I'm gonna take it out of the oven. You can see some of the caramelized bits, but we avoided it getting too, too messy. I'm just gonna set this aside for a few minutes, let it cool down before I cut it. And uh, I can use this time to start the rolls. So. I have this new mat. This is a plastic sushi mat. If you have a bamboo mat, you definitely want to use plastic wrap, but I did get one of these, so I did not have to use plastic wrap as I make these rolls. So I have my rice, I have my cucumber, I have my avocado. I also have some sesame seeds, which I'll be sprinkling on there. And of course the toasted nori, which is going to be what the sushi will be rolled in. So let's begin. I'm going to start with the dragon roll because it doesn't have the eel on the inside. I'm going to lightly wet my hands and grab about a half to three quarters of a cup of sushi rice. And I'm going to just break it up across the nori. You don't want to push it down. You don't want it to clump up too much. Uh, if you notice that it is sticking to your hands, just dip them in the water. But you want to try to get it as evenly distributed as you can. Again, don't push down. And it's okay if there are a few little spots where the nori can be seen through it. That's okay, when we roll it, things will get smashed down a little bit and those holes will be filled in. And we're gonna be flipping this over. Right before we do that though, I wanna hit this with some toasted sesame seeds. And then I'm gonna flip this over and you want to get this edge as close to the edge of the mat as possible. And then we're ready to add the ingredients. Spooning out the avocado just makes it a lot easier. And you wanna go in maybe about two inches or so from the edge. Make sure it's pretty evenly distributed. I'm adding two strips of cucumber. And I have a damp towel here, which I'll use for cutting, but also just to keep my hands clean. Using the mat, I'm going to tuck the nori under, and then allow the mat to help me continue to roll. Even if the roll isn't perfect, you want to take the mat and drape it over the roll, give it pressure from the top and the sides, and it should help tighten it, and you should have a pretty solid roll. I'm gonna set this aside and uh, prepare the eggplant so that I can put it on top of this and inside of the other roll. My eggplant has cooled slightly, and I'm just moving it to a cutting board so I can slice it. It is a bit sticky, be careful that it doesn't rip. Okay, so to get the perfect eel appearance, we wanna try to slice it in long, diamond shape pieces. So I'll just show you on this one here. And you want them because this eel is actually kind of, I keep calling it eel, this eggplant is actually slightly difficult to slice once it's on the rolls. So you wanna to try to plan the size of your slices to be about the same width as your eventual sushi rolls. And you wanna to try to get them as long as possible as well. 
You might have some parts that are a little bit more seedy that don't work as well. That's fine. Like this, it's sort of broken apart. That'll be fine to just put inside of a roll. And also be careful on the edges. Sometimes the skin doesn't cut all the way through. So just double check that it's cut through before you try to pick it up. I finished slicing up the eggplant. There are some pieces that are a little bit more broken up, some that are a little bit more perfect. So I'm definitely gonna use the ones that are broken up for the inside of this next roll. So I'm gonna set this behind me and I'm gonna set up the next roll, the caterpillar roll. So same thing as last time. You want damp pans. Pick up about half to three quarters of a cup. You may even need up to a cup, depends. I've never actually really measured. I just assumed it was about a half to a three quarters cup. But. That looks okay. Sprinkle with sesame seeds. And then flip. As I said, again, if you don't have one of these plastic mats, make sure that you're using plastic wrap on a bamboo mat because otherwise this will stick once you have the rice side down. Other half of the avocado, I guess I should say the other quarter. And the last thing is the eel. And as you see, I'm using the less perfectly sliced pieces on the inside, because you'll never see it. Fold it over, push it back. Also, if you notice I'm doing this on a bamboo cutting board, I don't necessarily recommend that. Uh, the rice can get a little bit sticky and get stuck to the cutting board, so just be cautious. And the final shape. And there we have our caterpillar roll, and we're ready to put toppings. My rolls are rolled. I have the caterpillar here, which has the eggplant eel inside, and this one is going to be the dragon roll that does not have the eggplant eel inside. I have the avocado that I sliced earlier, and I'm just going to try my best to fan this out just a little bit. I am gonna be adding avocado to the top of both of them, but more on one. So this one here, which is the caterpillar. Just trying my best to fan these down here. This is the part I always struggle the most with. Luckily, it's just gonna be for me. Get it as much on top as you can. If you wanted to use the full slice of the avocado, I'm just trying to be a little bit conservative here, it will wrap down a little bit. Um, and then you can take your sushi mat press down a little bit, and that'll just help to secure the avocado to the top. The next one, I'm going to just add a little bit of avocado. I guess it'll be about the same amount, won't it? But the true star topping is the eggplant eel. And you're gonna be slicing these into eight slices. So you wanna make sure to lay them out so that, like I said, you can cut in between them, which just will help to make the slicing process a lot easier. Now, the way that I came across this recipe is I went to a local sushi place here that does offer some vegan rolls, and uh, they wanted $15 for a roll like this. And I think all the ingredients that I have that'll make multiple, multiple rolls doesn't even add up to $15. So um, I wanted to see if I could do it myself. I looked up a few different recipes online, perfected them, and this is what we have. So the part that I struggle with a little bit here is the, uh, the eggplant's a bit sticky. So I'm going to try my best to press this down. Sometimes the eggplant does like to stick to the mat though. If it does, just try your best. All right, so I'm going to slice these and then I will put them on my plate that I'll be serving them on and do the final accoutrement. So make sure you have a damp towel 
and you want to slice eight slices. The reason you want a damp towel is so that you can wipe it off in between cuts so that any rice bits or avocado bits get wiped off and you have a clean knife each time. Having the plastic wrap on top does help to keep all your ingredients secure, but I'm still doing plastic free July, so not using any plastic wrap to do this. All right, there we go. I'm gonna be moving these over to a plate and then we'll finally sauce them and make them beautiful. I have both of these rolls plated up and they are both getting a generous brushing of this eel sauce. Just adds a nice glaze to the top and also it's full of flavor. You can be fairly generous with this. And I think this is what also kind of sells the final like eel appearance here. Just makes it so beautiful and glossy. And there's something about the way that that eggplant looks that has kind of a skin appearance to it. So I have spicy mayo and I'm going to drizzle this on both of them. I have this vegan roe, which I'm just going to put oops, on the caterpillar roll. This stuff is just kind of, uh, they're seaweed pearls. They just basically taste like little beads of salt. Obviously these are very optional, but if you do have an Ikea near you, it's just kind of a cool thing. And in this one, I'm going to give another sprinkle of sesame seeds. And then for both, I'm just gonna give a sprinkle of these panko crumbs, which I just lightly sauteed in a pan with a bit of oil. Usually this would be like uh, the remnants of tempura. It just adds a bit of crunch and texture. And there we have it. Caterpillar roll, dragon roll made with eggplant eel. So can't wait to try them. You have no idea how excited I am to try this. Vegan sushi is so rare, and when you do find it, it's so expensive, and I'm just ready to dig in. So I'm gonna try the dragon roll first. Mm. It is so surprising how much that eggplant gives you that eel like texture and flavor. Again, you're not really eating like eel, you're eating that sauce on something. And this is the perfect carrier and just texturally and flavor wise, like it's incredible. So let's try the other one. I'm excited to try these little seaweed pearls destroying it here. <laughs> they actually add like a really nice saltiness to the top. Um, I was reading the label and it looks like the orange color comes from carrots. So if you weren't wanting to get these Ikea vegan uh, fish row, then maybe some like thinly grated carrot would be nice to go on it as well. Next time I'd probably even add a bit more of the eel inside just to bring up the flavor, but these rolls are spot on. They taste exactly like what I remember from going to sushi restaurants or even the one that I went to recently where I had to pay $15, which is just a ridiculous amount for a roll. And you can make tons of these rolls for that same price. So 
give these a try. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks to all of you who have. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you do like it. Follow me on Instagram at Munson Made This. Um, still more updates coming out for the Plastic Free July. It's going really well. And uh, I will be back next week with another recipe video. So stick around for that. And uh, y'all have a great time until then. And I'm gonna eat my sushi. <laughs>